has now agreed to talks on decentralized power as part of a European-backed peace plan. But one key party was not invited. Our Greg Cott is streaming live from eastern Ukraine with more. Greg? Uh, that's right, Jenna. Those talks have begun in Kiev, but most analysts right now aren't holding out too much hope. Pro-Russian separatists from here at the center of a lot of the problems are not yet included. This is the Ukrainian military is still reeling from that attack. We first reported to you yesterday, which left those seven soldiers dead and seven injured. The charred remains of their armor personnel carrier and ammunition truck were seen in the countryside today, north of where we are right now. Thirty militants were said to be involved in the ambush, which included rocket propelled grenades and automatic weapons. There's still no word on casualties on the rebel side. This is just one of several flashpoints that we are tracking. Take a look at another. Just to show you how potentially volatile this situation is, behind us is a big Ukrainian military base manned by Interior Ministry police. We understand the past couple hours this separatist flag has been hoisted outside, and just across the way, a sandbag bunker manned by pro-Russian militants watching and waiting. Earlier today, it was reported that several dozen pro-Russian militia armed with weapons came to the gates of that base, demanding the Ukrainians there come over to their side. Apparently, they held their ground. The militants left their calling cards behind. Finally, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov once again weighing into the situation. In an interview out today, he said that Ukraine is on the verge of civil war, a conflict to which many assert Moscow is contributing. Jen. Greg, thank you.